Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Today, the market cap of XRP is much bigger than is being reported by cryptocurrency indices. In, in fact, XRP today, despite uh, the, uh, the fact that the SEC is going after Ripple, claiming that XRP is a security, an unregistered security of Ripple, despite the fact that XRP price is suppressed today, XRP is number three in market cap. Now, how can that be? Well, I'm going to share with you, with you some things that are not widely understood within the world of crypto. Uh, number one, and I, I, seriously, I don't know that I've ever really fully ever fleshed this out on my channel. I, I think I have not, which is kind of regrettable at this point because <laughs> I've been making my, I've, like I've made the point before, but um, market cap, the term has been hijacked and misused. What is being reported in crypto to be market cap historically absolutely is not market cap. People in the world of crypto, crypto hijacked the term and made it mean something else. So that's one reason. I'm going to break that down. And then there's, there's a second reason also, which, which is that the circulating supply of XRP is being misreported. So there's a couple things that you need to understand. But uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making uh, crypto-related YouTube videos, but uh, just as a hobby and just for fun. So w what is market cap? And this has been bothering me for literally years. I've known this for years. But uh, wh what is market cap? Well, in crypto, w the way it's described is that market cap is the circulating supply of a cryptocurrency times the current market price. But that's not actually, uh, that's, that's actually not what market cap is. Market cap is actually the total supply. If, if, if you're going to use the term the way it's always been used prior to crypto existing, all you do is you take the total supply and multiply it times the current market price. That is market cap, period. What is So what's the number that's actually being reported here as market cap? And I'm a live coin watch, watch right now. By the way, nothing against live coin watch other than, I mean, this is a friendly critique, just to be clear. Uh, what, what they're reporting, and coin market cap does the same thing, what they're reporting as market cap for every coin is not market cap. It's actually what's known as free uh, free float capitalization, which is a completely separate concept. Um, and, and, and to make my case, um, I, I will show you um, here. I'll show you this. This this is Coin Market Caps website, uh, and if you click on this or just highlight over this little eye, they they explain what market cap is. They wrote the following. It's on your screen right now. The total market value of a cryptocurrency's circulating supply. It is analogous to the free float capitalization in the stock market. Literally not true. It is not analogous to that. What is free afloat capitalization in the stock market? And you've got to understand this concept if, if you're going to get this point. Free float capitalization in the stock market is um, all shares that are publicly traded. So it would exclude any, any shares held by like a, a government or executives or, the, or the, the company itself. It's just what the public has. So, th that, so it's not the total supply. Again, let me say it again. The free float capitalization in the stock market is what the public holds, not what the company holds, not what executives hold, and not, uh, not what the government might hold, if anything, right? So market cap is the total supply, including what the company holds, including what a government entity might hold, and including what exec... It's everything. Market cap is everything, Okay. And so, again, free float is separate from that. It's just what the public holds. So when they state right here, it's on your damn screen, when they state that market cap is analog, market cap here is analogous to free float capitalization in the stock market, th th those are completely incorrect terms to correlate. That they're not the same thing. And so what they do cite correctly what they're calculating. What they are calculating is what they wrote on the screen. It's the, the circulating supply times current price. And lest you think I'm making this up, here's Fidelity, uh, Fidelity.com. This is their website. Now, mind you, they're an asset manager with $4.2 trillion under, um, under management. They know what they're talking about here. Here's a portion of a page that's in their learning center section uh, with a little subtitle, Market Cap versus Free Float Market Cap. And they write the following. Market cap is based on the total value 
of a company's shares of stock. Pause. Again, that's a full stop statement. It's the it's the total value of a company's shares of stock, not just the public stock. Because if you're talking about if you want to compare the compare a crypto and the stock market, then if you're talking about what is in the hands of the public, what can what like what in terms of stocks, what does the public hold? That would be equivalent to circulating supply in crypto. Let me say that again. In the, if you're talking about the stock market, the free float, the, the free float uh, capitalization, again, that's what the public holds. Okay, that's not the total supply; it's what the public holds. That would be equivalent to in crypto what we call circulating supply. It's what the public can hold, which again, two completely different things. And so they cite here also, float is the number of outstanding shares for trading by the general public. Again, the general public, not counting the company, not counting executives, not counting uh, the, the government. So that's what free float is, okay? Uh, and, um, and, and so they write here, the free float method of calculating market cap excludes locked in shares and those held by company executives and government. So there you go, it's, it's everything that I just said. It's, it's right there, that is a matter of fact statement. People don't get this. So what happened? Well, market cap was always used up until the crypto asset class existed to, to notate that uh, the, the, just, well, it's a simple multiplication. It, it's, it's just, you take the total shares times, uh, so again, total supply times the current market rate. That's always what market cap has been. Then crypto started, crypto became into existence, you know, over a decade ago. And then somebody created coinmarketcap.com and they decided to hijack the, the term market cap and made it mean something different. They made, made market cap mean free float capitalization, which is different. They hijacked the term market cap because it's not, what they're calculating is not market cap. They're, they're calculating free float capitalization. They're calling it market cap. And this went unchecked for years and years and years. Then then live coin watch launched and they did the same thing because they're copying, you know, they don't, they want to shake the apple tree here. And now all these years have passed and it's, you know, a decade later, I can't remember how long coin market cap's been around a long, long, long time. And now everybody's just accepted it. And most people don't even understand this difference. So are we just going to accept that market cap means something different from one asset class to the next? Well, we're all winging this as a society, making this up as, as we go along. So if, if enough time passes and it's not corrected, then OK. Um, I will tell you that years ago, and they may have gone back on this, Forbes had their own index and Yahoo had their own index. Um, I couldn't find them in existence. I don't even know if they still exist, to be honest with you, but they used to track their, their own crypto index. They calculated it the right way years ago. I kid you not, Forbes and Yahoo, they calculated the way that I'm telling you it's supposed to be calculated, which is total supply times the current market price, which put XRP way at the top. And so if you do calculate XRP price the right way, and you take the total supply, and the total supply in existence right now, uh, estimated by Livecoin Watch, is 99.99 billion. Uh, if, you just, if you just take that, and then you multiply times the current market price, well, whatever the number is, it's more than double what it is now because the market cap reported today is $35 billion, which means it's over, it's actually over $70 billion because there's a lot of uh, XRP that's uh, held in, in, in Ripple's escrow. So the actual market cap uh, for XRP, that would put it d definitely over $70 billion and uh, throw out the, the, uh, the stable coins, which frankly shouldn't mean by default in any index because that's useless. They're always worth the same amount. Nobody comes to find out if, if Tether is still worth $1. It's always worth a dollar. So they shouldn't be there by default. So throw out the stable coins, which weren't during, weren't here, uh, you know, in the top 10, even during the last market cycle, they just been printed into oblivion. They keep printing and printing and printing that now they're at the top. So throw out that and then look at the actual market capitalization. If we're using the term right, XRP is number three in market cap. It's above Binance coin. That's what market cap actually is. And, and this has nothing to do with what the price of XRP is. Understand, this, this doesn't impact the price of XRP because it doesn't change the amount of XRP that's, a sale, that's for sale on open markets. The amount of XRP that is for sale right now, now we're talking about liquidity, like how much is liquid? That, that's what we're talking about when we say supply and demand. So whether there's 50 billion or 100 billion XRP, whatever the total number is, that doesn't determine what the price of XRP is other than maybe a minor psychological impact because people are aware of this big number. But no, what really plays into it is how much is bought and sold, how much is, is, is available on open markets. That's supply and demand. 
That's what it actually is. So saying that XRP is actually number three in market cap, uh, you know, if, even if people accepted that, that wouldn't change the market rate of XRP. The same amount still available. So understand that me stating what is factually true, which is that the real market cap of XRP puts it at number three in market cap, uh, despite the fact the SEC is going after it, even though that's true, uh, e even if that were widely accepted and suddenly like you snap your fingers and everybody just knew this, if I could just plant that knowledge in people's head, it wouldn't, uh, it, it, that in and of itself wouldn't change the price of XRP because again, it's about what's available for sale on exchange. Now, um, it, it gets even more deep than that, though. What about circulating supply? What constitutes circulating supply? Hmm. Well, let's get into this. Take a look at, there's this tweet from Alloy Networks, which is a, a validator on the XRP ledger. Um, and, um, and they've been around for years and years and years. And they tweeted out the following. Been noticing some amusing tweets that XRP is inflationary. Here's a link to the code that shows that's just plain wrong slash uneducated slash trolling. And, and, and where did this stem from? Uh, oh, actually, here, I'll, I'll show you the code right now. Here, it's on your screen. Um, and you can see there's a note. This is the GitHub website, and they even wrote at the top here. A transaction must not create XRP and should only destroy the XRP fee, which, of course, if it's destroying the XRP fee, that makes it deflationary by code. And again, the code's on your screen. You can scroll through all the code. This is open source. It's provably the case. But this person who doesn't know what they're talking about, uh, named Dark Tetrad Psycho on Twitter, wrote the following. Because uh, actually, uh, one more step here. Matt Hamilton, former Ripple employee, wrote XRP is deflationary. Try again. Dark Tetrad Psycho retweeted that from former Ripple employee Matt Hamilton and wrote the following. XRP is not deflationary. This has been debunked many times by many sources. The annual inflation is 20%, which is why the price gets crushed. And again, I just showed you the GitHub, Alloy Network shared it, and they wrote, care to read some code? Because if you just click on it, you can see that that's clearly not the case. Um... And so if you go down here, there's this conversation that erupted under this thread as a result of all of this. And this is another reason that XRP is still number three in terms of market cap. Um, even if you don't buy into what I just said, and you'd be ridiculous not to, frankly, <laughs> nothing personal. But uh, if, you don't, if you don't buy into this concept that market cap was hijacked by these people in crypto to mean something different, and now it's just widely accepted. Uh, I mean, that's just, that's a matter of fact thing that just happened. But even if you don't buy into that, even, even if you look at circulating supply, circulating supply is being reported incorrectly. I kid you not. And I'm going to make my case for that as well. There's somebody named Dago1102 who jumped into the thread and wrote the following. I'm a big XRP fan, and I understand that the escrow makes XRP short-term inflationary. Why imagine total supply is $50 billion and there is a fixed rate of inflation until XRP total supply reaches $100 billion? That scenario is basically what's going on with the escrow. And so here, what this person is articulating is that Ripple, uh, they, they must assume that Ripple is the issuer of XRP. And so as they sell XRP, uh, it results in an inflationary effect, meaning that, of course, uh, you know, supply and demand plays out how it, it does. But uh, the fact that more is, got, which would be tantamount to creating XRP, by the way, if they're the issuer, I mean, it's, it's effectively the same thing, even though it's technically already in existence. Uh, he, he, this guy seems to have, and it's, he's incorrect, but seems to think that that makes XRP inflationary. Ripple, former Ripple employee Matt Hamilton responded to that and wrote, because it is not inflationary. The total amount of XRP, 100 billion, has been already issued. Now, folks, I want to be clear. That is unquestionably true, because who created XRP? Three people. David Schwartz, Arthur Brito, and Jed McCaleb. That's it. Three humans ever on the planet. There, there's three humans involved that created XRP. They created it before Ripple the company existed. So there are only three people that could have ever issued XRP. And understand this is important because those once it's issued, it's in circulation. And this is how Live Coin Watch. This is very key to understand. This is how Coin Market Cap and Live Coin Watch. For every other cryptocurrency on the planet, determine whether or not a cryptocurrency is in circulation. Has it been issued? If it's been issued, it's in circulation. Okay, who can issue XRP? Again, three humans, because Ripple didn't exist. Ripple can't issue it. 
Ripple existed a- after after XRP existed. So throw up Ripple. Ripple can't be the issuer, right? So who can? Again, three people. David Schwartz, Jed McCaleb, Arthur Brito. That's it, okay? So uh, we do know that David Schwartz did not take any XRP for himself upon completing the uh, XRP and the XRP ledger. Upon the code being finished, it being launched, he didn't take any. I don't know if Arthur Brito did. Um, I know that Jed McCaleb did. So the really the only two other people that you could even argue issue uh, could be issuers of XRP would be Jed McCaleb and and Arthur Brito. That's it. So the fact that a bunch of it moved from the issuers to a company that was later created, which was Ripple, means that Ripple is not the uh, again they're not an issuer, which means that the XRP that Ripple holds today, including that XRP that is in escrow, that XRP is in circulation. It's in circulation right now, even though it's an escrow. And even though Ripple's never sold that XRP and they've held it for, for the longest damn time, you know, about a decade almost. Um, and if you're thinking, but no, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not out there. Nobody can just buy it. It's an escrow. But not, you're looking at it wrong. That's not what it means to be in circulation. What it means to be in circulation is that it's been issued. It doesn't mean that it's for sale on an exchange. It doesn't mean that it can't be an escrow. If I put my, think about this. Think about it logically. If, if, if I put my XRP, which I own, in escrow, is it suddenly out of circulation? No. That's not what circulation means. Circulation means that the issuer has issued it, and then it's out into the wild. Whatever happens after that, it's 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 issued. That's it. It's done. It's in circulation. It doesn't mean that it has to be for sale on an exchange, which means that all of this, this XRP that's right on your screen here right now, um, you know, that's 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 purported to be the circulating supply. That's not the entire circulating supply. It's not correct. They're saying that here's a lot of coin watch. Circulating supply they're reporting is 48 billion. Not true. It's almost 100 percent of the supply. Maybe you could argue that whatever Jed McCaleb holds, and if our if, if Arthur Bretto has any, I'm not even sure if he got any off the top of my head. I don't know. I know David Schwartz did. Other than that, look, there is no XRP yet to be issued. None. Ripple can't issue XRP. They are not the issuer. So it is in circulating supply. All of it's in circulating supply, but it's not being calculated that way. And as a result of it being miscalculated, XRP is is allegedly number six in terms of market cap. You know, and and even if you took out USDT and USDC because they're they're stable coins, it would still be number four. It would you know it, 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 because again, thirty five billion dollar market cap. They're misreport. So again, two two big things are like I said, they they hijack the term market cap to mean something that it has never meant, and people are just going with that. So if if, if fine, if, if, if as a society we're just going to go with that, and I've been playing along nice for the longest time. Uh, because otherwise, I'm just going to confuse people. If every time I p- talk about market cap, I say a number that's different than what people think it is, I'm not even going to try and be the one person on the planet that fights it. I'm just sharing with you the information. But um, you know, setting aside that, even the the circulating supply that's being reported by these websites is not correct. That's a matter of fact statement, which means that XRP today, um, it's it's what, what's the market cap? Again, I didn't crunch the number for us. Over seventy billion. So it's behind Ethereum, fine. It's so it's it's number three in market cap. That's it. Undeniably, unquestionably the case. And I've never really talked about this in depth to this degree, so I hope that it's making sense. If you're familiar, not familiar with some of these terms and concepts, it may take a little bit to like wrap your brain around, maybe listen to this a, a second time. If it's not making sense, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I've been thinking about this for literally years on end and just been playing along with people that just don't know what they're talking about when it comes to issuance of cryptocurrency, circulating supply, and what the hell the term market cap means. So again, if if we're going to play along and just pretend like market cap is this different definition, but just for this asset class with anything else, um, that's not how it's calculated. Go to precious metals, go to the stock market, it's calculated differently. But if we're just going to accept because reasons here, it's different for crypto, fine. I think that's stupid as hell. But if that's what we're going to call, because what they should have done is just said, okay, market cap is total supply, um, total supply um, times the current market price, because that's what it actually is. And then you should have just had free float capitalization, which you can't even find on, or maybe you can. I don't know for sure if they have custom filters for that. They might, um, but, but give it the right damn name. But they didn't want to. They didn't want, for whatever reason, they thought that's the number that's important. That's my speculation anyway. 
Because market cap, that's the term that people know when it comes to stocks. That's the number people actually care about. And, and so for whatever reason, they decided that's the one that's important. But it's not analogous as I highlighted. And I've proven my case. It's undeniably the case that they just hijack the term and then circulate and supply. Come on, folks. It's completely absurd here. Um, and, and, and Matt Hamilton ends up making the same point here. So he stated, uh, you know, um, XRP is not inflationary. Why? Well, it, it's already been issued. All the, all the damn XRP has been issued unless, except for maybe you could argue Jed McCaleb. And I don't know the full history of where his has moved. Did he, does it move somewhere else and then back to him? Maybe it was issued and then somehow it went back to him. Maybe it was from Ripple and back to Jed McCaleb. Um, that may be the case that Matt Hamilton would make his later in the thread. He said it's all been issued and he could be right. He could absolutely be. I just don't know for sure where, where his is issued. So I'm just like, it's just to be fully transparent. But yeah, if it was issued, like if it was issued to Ripple, then it's out in circulation. And then if some made it back to Jed McCaleb, well, okay, that doesn't make it suddenly go out of circulation. That is not how this works. It doesn't mean it's now, it doesn't go from issued to unissued. That's not, that's not how it works, folks. And that's not how they're counting anything else. Look at Bitcoin or anything else. That is not how this works. And, and, and if you're going to talk about escrow, if escrow means it's supposed to not count as circulating supply, well, if I, I tell you what, if I put my XRP in circulating supply, live coin watch and coin market cap aren't counting that. They're not counting that as suddenly out of circulation. And they're not counting escrowed uh, crypto for any other cryptocurrency besides XRP. They're not that I've seen anyway. They're not counting any other escrowed cryptocurrency as being outside of circulating supply. But they are doing it for XRP, but only for Ripple's escrowed XRP, not for mine. If, you, if, if, if Well, I don't escrow mine, but if I did, and if you escrow yours, they're not going to count yours either. Only, only Ripple's. What the hell? That's not even logical. They're not following a roadmap for how to apply set rules. They're just all just, eh, well, I don't like it because reasons I don't want it to be. And it sounds like Ripple's, you can kind of just, you can imagine how they're justified. Well, Ripple, they're, they're, some of those people know the people that created XRP. It's, eh, we don't want to count it. So they're justifying it however they're doing it, but it's not, it's, it's, it doesn't logically follow. It doesn't follow some sort of coherent plan here. And so somebody named H. Bar Owl responded to Matt Hamilton and wrote, but the 100 billion are not in circulation. Therefore, it is inflationary. When the 100 billion are in circulation, I will agree it is deflationary. It ain't that hard, boys. Oh, except for it is because you're missing facts and you don't know what circulating supply is even H bar Al. And Matt Hamilton wrote, how do you define not in circulation? Is my XRP in my cold wallet in circulation? Which is a very good point. It, it just doesn't matter. Just like, and he goes on to point later on, you know, Grayscale holding a bunch of Bitcoin. Uh, that, you know, just because they're holding a bunch of Bitcoin... And that's a hedge fund. It doesn't mean that it's not in circulation. It is in circulation. It's just being held by a big ass hedge fund. <laughs> oh, I'll go ahead and wrap it there. That might've been a mind bomb for a bunch of people listening. I kind of hope it was. I hope that I shared some stuff that you were completely unaware of here. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know. I've been thinking about it for years though. I've thought of uh, every conceivable angle, but hey, if I miss something, you've got something persuasive, let me know. But I think Matt Hamilton's right. Everything is in circulating supply, unless you could argue Jed McCaleb, so I don't know that one 100%, but even that's a small percentage of XRP at this point. He owns, I think he owns less than a billion, what, like 600, 700 million, so whatever it is. Um, but no, Matt, Matt Hamilton hits the nail on the head, and XRP is provably deflationary. It's written into the code. XRP is number three in market cap. The world just seems to not want to admit it. Ridiculous, right? I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.